EVA1, we'll start out at the airlock with Drew Foistel and Greg Chamatov. Both crew members will translate out to the starboard side of the truss to the ELC-2 where they will start their work on the MISI 7A and 7B experiments. They will demate existing electrical and data cables. They will close the, the doors on the experiment. They will release it and then stow it on their body restraint tether. Here's some footage from the neutral buoyancy lab of Drew and Greg practicing this. Once they have the experiments both stowed on their body restraint tethers, they will translate down to Endeavor's payload bay. Greg will work on the starboard side of the payload bay. Drew will work on the port side. They will work on transferring the MISI experiments from their body restraint tethers to the sidewall carriers for the return trip home. Drew will translate aft in the payload bay then to retrieve the MISI 8 experiment. Both crew members will then translate back up to the S3 truss. Drew will translate to the top of the ELC-2 once again where he will install the new MISI-8. He will open the cover on it and then install two connectors providing data and power. He will also take photos once he's done this. Meanwhile, Greg will work on installing a light on the S3 truss. This is called a CETA light or crew equipment and translation aid light. Here's a photo of the light in the install location. The light has a single bolt and there's a single electrical connector that provides power to this light. Once he's completed that work site, he'll translate a little further outboard to the P3 Sarge or Sola Alpha Rotary Joint where he will work on reinstalling a cover that protects that Sarge. This cover was first removed during an increment 16 EVA. This cover has six bolts. Once complete on the starboard side of the truss, both crew members will translate over to the port side of the truss to start setting up for that fill on EVA2. They will demate a 16 foot long jumper that we have that's currently stowed on the P4 bulkhead. They will need to lock the port Sarge in order to do this. Greg will work on installing the port side of the, uh, the P4 side of this jumper and Drew will work on installing the P3 side of this jumper. Once they have that jumper installed, Drew will translate outboard to the P5, P6 junction where he will demate a fluid line. He will mate it up to a nitrogen vent tool. At this point in time, we have a continuous pipeline running from P5 all the way into the P1 ammonia tank assembly. He will vent the nitrogen pad from this line. And then he will translate outboard to the final jumper that runs to the P6 PVTCS. He will demate, demate that jumper, mate the nitrogen vent tool, and then once again vent the nitrogen pad from this jumper. Once we're complete with venting the nitrogen from the P3, P4 jumper, we will need to demate one side of it in order to allow the port Sarge to rotate between EVAs for power generation. So Greg will work on demating the P3 side of that jumper. He will route it back over to its stowage panel on P4 where he will mate it. And then he will secure the line with a wire tie on a handrail to ensure that it doesn't get caught up in the Sarge rotational envelope. Both crew members will then translate over to the U.S. Lab Node 2 interface on the Nader side there where they will set up for installing those new antennas. Drew will first set up a medium bag that contains the two antennas as well as that octopus of cables. And Greg will start his work on the top side of the lab where he will be removing two existing handrails and installing two new handrails that already have the antennas integrated on them. These handrails each have two bolts. Here, here's a flight photo. Here's a flight photo of the antenna integrated on the handrail. And here's some footage from the neutral buoyancy lab of Greg performing this work. Once he's complete, he will translate Nader on the lab to help Drew with their next task of installing this octopus of cable. They will release a gap spanner, open up a shield which will reveal which will reveal an existing EWIS or external wireless instrumentation system cable which they will demate and then they will work on installing this new set of cables. They have two connections that they need to make underneath this shield then they will work on routing the six legs of this cable. Once they've made those connections under the shield they'll work together to close it up and install the two Zeus fastener, three Zeus fasteners that hold it down. They will then finish demating that old EWIS cable. It will be temp stowed in a bag to return inside. They will route two lines of this cable up to the antennas that Greg just installed. 
They will route another two lines and they'll just temp stow those for future use. And then they will finally install the final two legs of this cable into those EWIS antennas so that that system still remains functional. Once they're complete at the work site, Greg will reinstall the gap spanner and work on ensuring all the tools have been stowed inside the medium bag to return back to the airlock. And Drew will head off early to translate back to the airlock to start more preparation work for the EVA2 ammonia fill. He will retrieve a few tools from the larger uh, fluid quick disconnect bag, which he will relocate to the vent tool extender bag. He will also work on retrieving from the airlock a bag that contains two of the power jumper cables that we will be installing on EVA3. Our airlock is so full on EVA3 that we need to preemptively stow these cables external to the airlock in preparation for EVA3. Once complete with that task, both crew members will translate back to the airlock. They will ingress, and that completes EVA1. Thank <laughs> you.